Hi, I'm Naomi Cavaday. I was a WTA player and now I'm a broadcaster and coach and I'm also a mental health ambassador for the UK Lawn Tennis Association. When I was a player I had some times when I didn't feel okay emotionally and maybe you feel like that sometimes too and that's normal. Tennis is a hard sport and puts us under a lot of stress. In this video we're going to try and understand what happens when we're not feeling good emotionally and what we can do to try and make ourselves feel better. We're also going to look at some ways to find good balance in your life to help you on and off the court. Mental health is just as important as physical health because when you're unhappy or anxious, it can affect everything in your life, especially your tennis. If you have physical pain in your body or you know something's not right, you take care of it. It's the same with your mind. In tennis, we often talk about being mentally strong, but it isn't about how well you concentrate in matches. It's about how you feel emotionally away from the court. Anyone's mental health can be measured on a scale at any one time, from feeling good and settled at one end to struggling and being in crisis at the other end of the scale. Several current and past players have talked about how they have struggled with their mental health, and maybe you've experienced some of the same feelings. there are different signs that show that we're struggling with our mental health. I didn't realise at first when I was struggling because I thought I had to be crying and sad all the time like I'd seen on TV and I was winning tennis matches so I thought I was okay but I really wasn't. Now looking back I can see that I would say for a year, a year and a half uh, before this started you know I, I started to have uh, symptoms I started to have, I, I call it warnings from the body. I, I got sick and I had a lot of cold, sore throat, fever. A year before this happened to me, if someone would speak to me about mental health problems or they're being stressed or having anxiety, I would just look at them and like, come on, what are you talking about? When we're feeling anxious, it's amazing how quickly all of our worries can add up and get out of our control. When that happens, it's important to tackle them one by one and even write them down. There might be some things that you can't do anything about, and that's okay. We can't control everything. Sometimes we can be very hard on ourselves. We say, I should do this, or I shouldn't have done that. Be kinder to yourself. Instead, say things to yourself like, I'm going to try harder to do that, or I made a mistake there. I can learn from it and do it differently the next time. When unhelpful thoughts start getting out of control, sometimes it's good to just stop and take a few minutes to take some deep breaths. No disfrutaba nada cuando, cuando iba a jugar, al revés, sentía una presión y una obligación y, y unos miedos que me hacían, o sea, no quería entrar en pista nunca, no quería competir, no. You worry about lots of little things because of one big thing, pressure, and also what you think other people expect from you. Sometimes it can feel like losing a tennis match is going to be the end of the world. I know I felt like I was going to let people down if I lost. It can be a horrible feeling and it was just too much for me in the end. A lot of us worry about how we look and that's true for boys as well as girls. Looking at things on social media like Instagram can make all of this much worse. Because you are an athlete, people will sometimes make comments on your physical appearance, whether that's online or in real life. Good nutrition and taking care of what you eat are really important in sport but sometimes it can go too far. We can develop illnesses that can make us become obsessive about food, eat in secret, or even, in extreme cases, make ourselves sick after eating. That is known as disordered eating, and if it starts to happen, it's really important that you get some help. Everyone feels sad sometimes. Sometimes it's because something has happened in your life that makes you feel like that. If the sadness goes on for a long time, or keeps happening, it might be a sign that you're depressed. Clinical depression is an illness, so it's more than just being sad. It needs medical treatment, so if you think you might be depressed, it is really important that you ask for help as soon as possible. Thankfully, the kinds of very serious issues we've heard about today don't happen to everyone. It's okay to say you're struggling. Maybe this is something you can say to your coach, or someone close to you. Maybe it's easier to say to someone who isn't involved with your tennis career, even just talking about it can make you feel better. When I start to speak about it, when, when I realize, okay, this is, um, this is very common, it was a little bit easier. Talk to people you feel close to or trust. It feels much better to talk with someone about it. 
Remember the mental health scale that we talked about earlier in the video. There are things that we can do to keep ourselves at the top of the scale and feeling good. So here are some tips for you to help you as you start your journey. First one is get real. We can only change things if we accept them first. That means that we need to be having an awareness of how things feel for us and an understanding of like taking your mental health temperature every day. No grit, no pearl. Without things that are a little bit tough and maybe feel a little bit frustrating or a little bit difficult, you don't get the pearl. It comes from an irritant, something that's a little bit annoying or a little bit challenging. And tennis is full of moments like that, but so is life. Unplug. We're all connected to our phones. At the end of the day, especially, you should turn your phones off before you go to bed at least 30 minutes before in order to get a good night's sleep. Be grateful. Wake up in the morning, be grateful to be alive, be thankful for what you have. You are more than a tennis player. Stay engaged with friends from home. Enjoy your hobbies. It's okay to do other things. As a junior player or in the beginning of my professional career, I had a lot of different interests. You know, I was interested in a lot of stuff, but during the years, I just took away all those things. You know, I started to be more and more focused on tennis. And, you know, the thing is my last year on tour, everything I just cared about or everything I was just thinking about was just tennis. And I think that's bad. Hey guys, just remember every time you go out there and train or go in the gym or whatever, make sure you keep having fun. You know, that's what I did as a, as a, as a junior and, and this is where I am now. So keep it up. It's okay not to be okay.